Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Uh, I am Rex, and this is Old Fitzgerald. Also a gift from Brian Lovato. Brian Lovato, you magnificent. Bastard. Oh. All right. I'm kind of excited about this one. This one uh, is, well, used to be exclusively, I mean, we're not used to be, we're talking 1800s was like a train railway exclusive. Right. And like steam ships. Any, any idea what prime bourbon is? It's legit. Right. Prime. It's like prime steak. Yeah. Prime beef. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Original cellar mash. Uh, we were laughing about this earlier in a different bottle. Occasionally you get these aggressive indentations. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally. Aggressive. A little thumb hold. Indentations <laughs> on, the bottom, on the bottle here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a thumb hold. Nobody has a thumb that big. Come on. So, Pappy Van Winkle bought the name Old Fitzgerald originally. Okay. Right? Um, and then, when it was all sold out, um, it's been sold off. Heaven Hill acquired this one. Okay. Right? Now, people, this is a under $20 whiskey. Oh. Oh, okay. So... But a lot of history. Adjusting the, the context, the spectrum, the frame of reference. Right. We're going to do some apples to apples comparisons here. Mm-hmm. Okay. You spilled some on my hands. That was for you, a gift. I am going to go On in. your hand? How did I get it on your hand? Well, Were you holding the glass? Yeah, I was holding the glass. Uh, There's something involved. There. Okay. Well, it's really light on the, on the nose on the hand. Has more present on the glass. Though. Wow. Yeah. Compared to what we were just smelling. Yeah. That is this vibrant. Is, it's it's uh it's perfumey. Yeah, it's more matured, more e rounded off. It things it feels like it's thicker and softer. It's dense. It's yeah. dense but soft notes like potpourri. Yeah. I, There's no sharp and zesty notes. There's no spice. It's, it's a different kind of uh, wood note than just straight oakiness. Yeah. It's not just a sweet oakiness. There is. It's, it's like, like when a, you use wood notes to provide the baseline in a, like a perfume or a cologne, where like the wood note gives you the, the stru low structure tones uh -huh. of the scent. There's, uh, I think there's some wicker involved in here. Yeah, I could see that. I actually really like the nose on this. Yeah, I like the nose. I mean, for the spectrum of whiskeys at that price point. That's a surprisingly nice nose. Thinner on the taste. Mmm. Paper mm. thin. Yeah. Whoa, that was a new thing in there. That's totally new. Three-fourths of the way through, it did this little ramp up yeah. spike, but I can't... What was that? What was that? Because it's watery, thin, sweet caramel bourbon, and then spring, yeah, and, and then it kind of subsides again. Yeah. Uh, but it's not spice. I wonder if it happens a second time. Maybe because we weren't acclimated to it. Because mm. you can tell it's proofed down. Mm -hmm. It's pipe tobacco. A tobacco note spells up? Yeah, like a, like a, not like a super aromatic pipe tobacco, but like the old tin okay. musty pipe tobaccos. Yeah, so I think at this point with this whiskey, we're, we're so trying to pull something out of it. Yeah, We're talking thin whiskey. Still, yeah, and it is thin, but it, still. It does an interesting thing where the moment you first get it in you, then it's like, wow, that's really Spread thin. It all but over. then it kind of swells a little bit. It swells a little bit. It's not an exciting, oh my goodness, this is like a, mm -mm. You know, a, a, a diamond in the rough type of deal. But it's surprising that it's there because usually at that price point, you're not expecting any type of swell up of an, of an interesting note. I, you say it's a tobacco. Tobacco mixed with Dr. Pepper. Mm. Flat Dr. Pepper. Oh, the flat cola. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat cola and, and piped, musty pipe tobacco. That's the most unique flavor combo on a budget bourbon that I've tried. Most of the budget bourbons go budget in a very specific direction. So I want to say... Still tastes like a budget bourbon. I'm going to agree. I want to say the most unique combo in a budget bourbon of the budget bourbons released by the big company. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think if you're yeah. getting into like craft and then their budget releases. Well, you most get, craft is not budget, but yes. Well, but I'm saying though, whenever they do something that's super affordable, sometimes it's affordable and then weird. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that was an experiment gone wrong. Yeah. And you're just trying to get rid of it. Now, so this is still on home cheap. plate. Yeah. Ah, it's, a bit, it's not a bad choice if you're going for the budget bourbon and you're trying to grab something there. It's. You know what? The aftertaste is all of that flat cola, and it's losing me. The longer it sits, yeah. the less I like it. Uh, I, I think 
this is probably something I'd feel comfortable reaching for if I was going for a cocktail. Need the mixer. Yeah. Neat pours. There, mm. I think even even recently there were some budget bourbon neat pours that we were relatively surprised by. Yeah, and Doug. But it's been a while. All right, we got Jacob this Oh, it was the Heaven Hill six-year-old. That's what it was, the old oh, yeah. style of bourbon, yeah. Which is still mm -hmm. relatively tricky to get your hands on because it's only in Kentucky. Evidently. Yeah, all right. We got yeah, the Jacob. Good, good, wait. Good memory. Good recall. Everyone, no, just dislates, 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 dislates. Jacob, D. Everyone should start drinking every time Rex stretches and we see his belly button. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. <laughs> no, no. Over or under. What, what, what's the comment? Before it happens, because I'll, I'll lift up. Right. Do you think with this. With the sweatshirt? If I go straight up, we, we will see fully bel full belly button. Yes. With this. Yeah. All right. Leave the comment In right now. Okay. Yes, belly button. No, no belly button. All right, lock it in, lock it in, pause it if you need to. Three, Ready? two, one. Yep. Oh, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most internet game in the world. <laughs> lock in your comments. Lock in your comments now. <laughs> Timestamp them. <laughs> All right. What did you win? Middle-aged furry man belly. Yeah, That's another drink, mean. evidently. Orion uh, Rachui. Rachui. Ratchway. Ryan R. Our barrels rotated, spun, revolved, rolled during aging. Um, can they or are they continuously rolled during the aging process? What effect should occur? Has it been done? Okay, no. Right, because usually you want the bunghole facing up. Yeah, but I mean, even just moved around to interact with any air gaps, right. 90 plus percent of the time, no, absolutely not. But the only time, a, any time a barrel's moved is because it's being moved somewhere else, mm -hmm. but not in order to affect the whiskey. But there are experiments like Jefferson's, Jefferson's Ocean. Ocean and some other distilleries that are specifically experimenting on the movement of spirit inside right. of a barrel. So Jefferson Ocean is the most accessible one. Because they're probably. putting the barrels on ships and it's just the natural um, Who is it that does that one? It's like Madeira, I think, that did that. The ship rocking yeah. to create the wine. Yeah, anyway. So um, Jefferson's Ocean is a wildly popular. <laughs> yeah, and, and more accessible than any of the other people I know who are rotating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. because they can do it at scale. Right. Um, but it doesn't, there's nothing, like I like that whiskey actually, mm -hmm. but there's nothing about that that goes, oh my gosh, this is just so much more explosive of a flavor set. It's just, and, oh, this is just a nice whiskey. And that's why for most of the stories, especially when you're big and you're dealing with thousands and thousands of barrels at a time, right. the amount of work and cost involved in shifting those barrels versus the flavor impact it would have, Yeah. nope. And, and keep in mind, a lot of these guys, they're not really lazy, mm -hmm. right? So if there was a, uh, thing that impacted the flavor that much in that positive a direction, right. people would have figured that out by now. I wonder at what, because you know, at a certain point of mm. agitation, you're going to get an effect. Oh yeah. I wonder at what point that is, because apparently soft rolling movements on the waves. That's time, one thing. That, that's, you know, it's a nice whiskey, but it doesn't have something obvious. At well, then point, you got, I'm thinking like maybe a, 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 a giant paint mixer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scaled for barrels. <laughs> it's just gonna, it's just gonna come apart. Right, 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 yeah. The whiskey's flying everywhere. <laughs> now you got like blackened, where they use sound waves to agitate the whiskey. Yeah, so right, like a lot of the people doing fast aging are effectively using techniques that you would use for that to we, try to impact, speed up the wood impact. We did an episode on the Whiskey Tribe channel. Mm -hmm. It was playing around with like uh, ultrasonic mm -hmm. uh, going through whiskey and wood to agitate that. And it did have least, an impact. It, it has an impact. Uh, but it doesn't make it a good whiskey. You don't speed up. The it just has process. an impact. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Uh, the one thing I was thinking is in my, one of my head pictures yeah. is like you ever beat it, you ever been in one of the tor places where they do like the tortilla line mm -hmm. where there's someone they're smashing and dropping in a tray oh, yeah. and it goes up through all these tiers and it dry and then it falls out and then someone puts it in a package. Yeah. I picture that for barrels in a barrel warehouse <laughs> where it's just like instead of just racks, they're all on rails yeah. and barrels are just slowly like making their way through the warehouse rolling and turning yeah, yeah and then they come out the other side and <laughs> piping hot yeah <laughs> um the well in in specifically when it comes to like moving barrels it's the uh, people that are playing with that are looking for ways to hopefully speed up the aging a little bit yeah and yeah. in terms of um what we have seen the distillery that i think is doing the most 
it seems like the most the, the most interesting result that we would consider a quality whiskey. Mm-hmm. I think this is the lost the lost spirits. Yeah, the guys in California, but I don't know what they're doing to do that. Right, so they, we don't know that they're shaking barrels or using well, no, Sonic. No, 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 I'm not saying that. But I'm saying yeah. they, they are rapid aging. They are doing some version of accelerated aging. And I don't know how much of that whiskey in the bottle is rapid aged. I don't either. And it I don't know just, what it starts as. Right, and it may be like a token amount. I don't think it starts as new make. But I will say this. Of the distilleries that are claiming some type of quote unquote rapid aging, accelerated aging technique. There's the least objective. Yeah, yeah. it's the least objectionable. And quite frankly, some stuff in there that I thought it was just good yeah. in its own right. I just don't know how much of that was rapid aged and how much of it was blended with stuff that it went through a traditional process. True. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, fight for a friend. You steal, make you steal your love heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Off my nuts. Uh, 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 uh. The bottle of the Lord. Uh, 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 uh. The bottle of the Lord. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's Ma- it's Matt. It's what? It's Matt who right. hangs out with us every Friday. It's Matthew Wright. Oh, yeah, just forget about this one. <laughs>